Hello everyone, and welcome to the podcast for Herbie's Cooking Corner. If you would like to join these calls live, you may do so by subscribing to the ACB events by sending an email to community at acb.org and just let them know that you would like to be added to their mailing list to be notified of the weekly events. Today, I am going to be making chocolate mayonnaise cake, and before we get to the actual call, I'm just going to briefly go over the ingredients that you will need if you are following along. Two cups unsifted all-purpose flour, two-thirds cup cocoa, one and a fourth teaspoon baking soda, one-fourth teaspoon baking powder, three eggs, one and two-thirds cups sugar, one teaspoon vanilla, one cup mayonnaise, and one and one-thirds cup water. You are also going to need cake pans, Though I was able to do it with a very deep bunt cake pan, you'll need your oven preheated to 350 degrees, and they recommend you use cooling racks. You are also going to need two mixing bowls, a spoon for stirring, and an electric mixer. Be sure to listen to the very end of this podcast, as I include an extra on how the cake actually turns out. Ready to begin? Let's start! Hello everyone and welcome to Herbie's Cooking Corner for October 5th, 2021. My name is Herbie Allen and today we are going to be making a very widely anticipated chocolate mayonnaise cake. Now I do want to mention that this call is being uh, podcasted so that means that if you want to go back and follow along with the recipe at your leisure you are going to be able to do that. And I want to thank the folks over at ACB, not only for allowing me to have the opportunity to host these calls, but to now be able to submit them. So we hope that you enjoy this. And if you're listening to this call via podcast and you want to join me live, we are typically every other Tuesday. I am going to be primarily sticking with the normal time of 10 a.m. Eastern. And that'll be the first and third Tuesdays of the month, if you would like to join me live. (coughs) So today, like I said, we're going to be making a chocolate mayonnaise cake. I'm going to be going over the ingredients, the procedures, and whatnot. And you can participate at any time. Um, I do ask that you please stay muted unless you are asking a question or if you are following along. And if anybody is following along, you do not need to raise your hands, but um, you can just speak out. But please let me know ahead of time that you are following along live. Everyone else, if you could please, if you have any questions at any time, raise your hand. Um, if I'm unclear about anything or whatever, if you have any recipes you'd like to share, please save those until the cake is cooking. We can talk about anything there, but during the first part, I'd like it to be questions primarily on what I'm doing. Um, If you have any alternate techniques you'd like to suggest, that is fine as well. Now let's get started. So the first thing we are going to need is two mixing bowls and we're going to use mixing bowl number one for our dry ingredients and then mixing bowl number two for our wet ingredients. Now this is going to be interesting because I have not tried this recipe before. I was kind of inspired when uh, people had asked about it on the Sheila's recipe swap. And that is a great call that is on the Wednesday. I think it's the second and fourth Wednesday of the month, at least the second Wednesday. Um, but you can subscribe to community at acb.org and you'll get daily updates on the schedule. That's okay though, because I decided that I want to demonstrate what's it like doing a recipe for the first time. and. We'll learn what that's like, learn from any mistakes, and just have a little bit of fun. So the first thing it calls for is two cups unsifted flour. And I've got in my hand a two cup measuring cup. I got this beauty from Blind My Smart, their uh, Mega Mall store, or well, just from their main store. I forget, this is like several years ago. But they have an awesome measuring cup and spoon set that goes beyond just your standard four cups and so it goes as i think it's like an eight cup i forget but it definitely goes as high as a two cup measuring cup which is good when we need a two cup measuring flour i should have put in this in the set my flour container on a cookie sheet to in case any spillage occurs on the counter oops well i'll just have to clean that afterwards so now i'm going to i've <clears throat> used the cup to kind of scoop out the flour i'm using my hand now to just flatten it out 
and now we're going to pour into the mixing bowl. Excellent. Okay, I don't think I'm going to need this two cup measuring cup again. So into the sink it goes. <coughs> and back in the, 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 on the tub goes the lid. I have, uh, rather than using like the original bag that the flour comes in, I pour it into this big bin type container that has a lid and that's a lot easier to seal and maintain and pour the flour, oops, excuse me, from, rather than trying to do it from the original bag. And the same goes for sugar as well. And um, so I highly recommend that you find containers to put your stuff in when doing um, baking or cooking if you're doing a lot of stuff with sugar and whatnot. Okay. So this calls for, like I said, un all purpose flour, by the way, and it says unsifted. So that means we're not gonna do anything to it. All right, next, this calls for two thirds cup cocoa. So let's get the cocoa out of the pantry here. <coughs> and cocoa is one of those containers that's very easy to identify unless you get chocolate powder that's home, then this feels similar, but it's a rectangular container it has a rectangular lid, and I've got it still in the original plastic bag that it came in from the Walmart order, so that's what you hear rattling. And so, like I said, it is very easy to identify without any um, special equipment or whatnot. So I'm going to look for my two-thirds. That's one and two-thirds. Don't want that. Three-fourths and two-thirds okay that comes like i said as part of this unique measuring cup set from blind my smart otherwise if you don't have two-thirds cup then what you can do is just use a one-third cup and you know you'll have to scoop out the cocoa twice so right now i'm getting the plastic off of the cocoa i've not used this before well i've used it before but this is a new um, container and whatnot. <coughs> so we're getting that off and now I'm going to, this is going to be easier to hold over the bowl and I'm just going to pour the cocoa into the cup and just kind of let it fill any day. Come on, it's supposed to be a little bit of a uh, challenge to pour out and I'm hearing some breathing there. Do we have any raised hands? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. I, I, I do have a question myself, though, but I'll wait until you're ready to ask them. Okay, perfect. Well, I am. Uh, let me pour this into the bowl first. I'm just uh, leveling it out again with my hand. And, you know, I see I have a little bit more room. I want this cake to be chocolatey. So if you don't object, I'm going to add a little bit more cocoa. And if you do object, I'm still going to add it anyway. Okay, so this stuff can be a little bit fun to pour out. Okay, now is a good time for any questions. And Diane, we will, um, <laughs> I guess, start with yours. And hey. then we'll... Yeah, the, the, those uh, measuring cups that you bought from uh, Blind Mice Mart, are they labeled in, in Braille or any, or you just keep them fit inside of each other and that's how... Because I think if I had too many cups, I'd forget what I want. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, yes. So they are brailled. Um, it's right there on the handle, um, right next to where the cup is. And yeah, I mean, you've, if you can, they do, of course, fit into each other. But like you said, that would be too much to remember, especially it's not so bad for me if it's the standard for cup measuring set. Yeah, no, it's not. And that's usually what you would have. And it's yes, easy to remember. But those, for yeah. this set, you definitely would want them brailled. Um, but yes, they they uh, they fit into each other, but they are brailled, and um, that definitely comes in handy. Thanks, Herbie. You're welcome. Do we have any other questions? Um, still no raised hands. All right. Then let's continue on. As now, I need my baking soda 
which I have right here. I keep mine in the fridge so that way it just you know keeps the fridge fresh and interestingly enough I have a half stick of butter buried in the box. I don't do not know how that happened but um keeps the fridge fresh it keeps the baking soda fresh and um I guess everybody's happy so okay Kirby, so you this... now have raised hands how do you want to oh, handle that yes go ahead um now we'll go ahead and take that um, real quick as i'm finding my measuring spoon okay so. first is a phone number uh the area code is 201 and it ends in 406. Um, hi this is hello hi <clears throat> I, I I came in a few minutes late and I'm sorry. Um, I missed the very intro. I got a phone call just as I was connecting. Um, I I'm trying to wrap my head around mayonnaise in this. Um, it, it doesn't go bad. The may you know putting it in the oven because I know there's a dish of cooking like chicken, onions, and mayonnaise and baking it in the oven. It's a Russian thing. Um, but I never heard of mayonnaise in it. Did you speak about that already? And I apologize if you already did. I did not speak about that. Um, first of all, so, I mean, if you're cooking something, it's not necessarily gonna go bad because there's many things that can go bad in the oven, like dairy, like eggs, for instance, you know, we bake that into stuff all the time. Um, <clears throat> I know mayonnaise is, um, in fact, it has eggs in it, but um, it can definitely be cooked into stuff. And then what I would do is I would, what we're gonna do is, you know, once the cake is done, you know, keep the leftovers in the refrigerator and that should um help keep it you know from spoiling okay um next you have chanel chanel yeah i just wanted to clarify real quick don't those measuring cups have like large print on them for anybody who reads print as well as braille i wouldn't know um i certainly i thought it was raised I thought it was like it, I do feel some raised print on them. Yes, um, whether okay. it's large print or not, but it wouldn't surprise me um, if anybody has those measuring cups from Blind My Smart and can comment on that. Then just don't cool, want to leave our friends out that might no. not do braille. So I'm trying to find the right measuring spoon here and not having much luck. So we've got a. Um, these tablespoons are a little bit harder to read, so we're going to make do with a half tablespoon, and I'm just going to pour out, um, it calls for one and one fourth teaspoons, so we're going to do two half teaspoons, and I'm just going to kind of guesstimate, and did we have any more raised hands? Nope. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> this is going to prove to be interesting. Hopefully I did not over uh, do it, but I guess we'll just have a really fluffy cake or one that explodes, but it does call for one and a fourth teaspoon um, baking soda. Okay, now I need to look at my recipe to see what we have next. And unfortunately, the disadvantage of reading a recipe on the phone is that Sorry. it sometimes wants to be difficult. Sorry. Okay. And then it calls for a fourth teaspoon, one and a fourth teaspoon baking powder. So I'm going to get that out. Baking powder again. This one is in, is in an identifiable container, but the thing that it can be easily confused with is cornstarch. They come in very similar round containers. So um, that is something to be mindful of. And we're now going to get that. And we're going to measure it out. So this comes with a plastic film on the inside when you first open the lid. And so I'm going to, has a nice little tab that we have to contend with. Oh, and then we can just kind of, um, it lifts up. So it's kind of like on the top. 
So we pull back this tab and then just try to kind of lift, move forward and voila, it should peel off. And we'll throw that away. And now we've got our baking powder open. Okay. So now we're going to use our, except our measuring spoon went away. So I'm just going to have to kind of guesstimate with the baking powder because for some reason my measuring spoons have gotten completely out of whack. You know, they talk about the dish running away with the spoon. Well, the spoons in my case seem to be running away. I don't know what I uh, did to them, but there, I found a half, my another half teaspoon I can use. So we're going to pour that in. And let's see, we're just going to kind of have to guesstimate. Like I said, this is a little bit tricky on the teaspoon. Okay, so now we've done that. I'm going to put the lid back on the baking powder. And the next thing that we are going to add in is the sugar. And finally, we get to use measuring cups again. I definitely find using measuring cups much easier than, um, what you call it, spoons, um, just because you have a lot more room to work with. But so now we need we need one and two thirds cup sugar. So. Let us now get to our one cup, and I'm going to feel the braille, and one C is what I see. But, um, so now I know I've got my actual cup measuring. And we're going to take down the sugar, and we're going to lift up the lid. And I've done, gone through a lot of sugar. Oh boy. Okay, so we're going to scoop that into the cup. And we're going to pour. And just kind of make sure the sugar is not lumped or anything like that. Okay. And we're just going to call for a cup and Two thirds. I'm just going to, for the sake of time, kind of estimate the two thirds because we're actually almost onto the bottom of the barrel with this sugar anyway. So there, I think that should do it. I just have it down in the cup a little bit so it's not quite to the top. And um, I think that is going to do it for our dry ingredients. Are there any questions at this time? You can raise your hand if you do have any. Still no hands. All right. So now I'm going to double check because we have to do the um, wet ingredients in a separate bowl. Yep. Still okay, no yep, raised hands. Okay, perfect. I guess I should have actually be added in the sugar into the uh, other bowl. So, uh, oh well. It'll make things a little bit more interesting than I had anticipated. So, like I said, this is trial and error. And uh, why you should definitely really familiarize yourself with recipes. Um, I don't know if it's going to matter too much one way or the other, but we are nevertheless going to make this work somehow. Okay, now where did my other mixing bowl go? I think they've gotten all mixed up somewhere as well. This is proving to be a very interesting cooking call, but we will have to wash out one real quick. I thought I had some more. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to mix up some wet ingredients and use a mixer. And mixers are not that hard to use. Uh, there are, they come in various types. Mine is just the standard handheld mixer. And, um, but there are like KitchenAid ones I've heard of that they, you put them on the counter and you run the stuff underneath and it does the work for you. I have not really had experience with those. Um, you definitely find them in more like professional type kitchens. So, um, but like I said, for today, we're just going to use a um, standard handheld mixer. I'm in general, you know, I am not one for fancy equipment myself. I find I can do just fine with the basic stuff and it works for me. But uh, that is my experience. Um, somebody had asked about for instance, like my uh, air fryers and what I use for that. And I do not use a smart air fryer at all. I uh, just use a uh, standard one with a dial. Okay, so letting the bowl dry out a little bit, and then we're going to get the eggs out of the fridge. And... get those dealt with so um and what we do we're going to do is the mayonnaise gets added in last into this recipe so all right so i've now got the eggs I really should have actually switched around the mixing bowls that i use because this one is a little bit more of a challenge to crack eggs i have these plastic mixing bowls that have thicker edges and sometimes that can be a bit problematic but um you'll see what we see okay so all right i was afraid of that well then we will do this we are going to get out a plastic glass because I just need it for the sides because we're going to actually pour the egg into the bowl. Okay, egg number one. So I just cracked it lightly in the gra glass. The shell broke and now over the bowl I just kind of took the shell, you know, like pulled it in half. I'm holding it together because we do not want any shells to enter into the mixture that would make for a very crunchy cake in a very unpleasant way so uh, always be mindful of that when dealing with eggs is to always try to make sure there's no shell or anything like that egg number two and egg number three Okay, and the, if you can only crack it once, that's even better because the less likely that it's going to break apart with the, you want it to, I mean, you want it to come in half, but, um, and I find if I do it like at the edge of the egg, that helps a lot more than trying to do um, the middle. So, Okay, let's put these back in the fridge and we're going to get out our vanilla. This is also one of those things that kind of comes in a recognizable container. It um, is usually, whether the bottle is plastic or glass, it's kind of a flat bottle and it has a very smooth rounded top that we can just um, unscrew and just pour a little bit in here. I'm usually not too precise with vanilla. Oh, do we have a question? Um, I'm looking. No, there are no raised oh. hands. Okay, so. Now that we've done that, now I'm going to get out my mixer and we're going to plug it in. 
I suppose, I, I don't know, I don't think you'd want to use an actual beater for this. I think you would just want to use um, a mixer, you know, a true mixer. And, you know, I'm wondering if I could probably get away with adding it. I could probably add in a tiny bit of sugar into the mixture itself, even though most of it's now in the dry ingredients. And um, hopefully that wouldn't have enough, but... Um, Okay, so this thing wants to read at me all at once, so okay, so now I know what I'm doing here. So we're now going to beat the mixture, and it calls for us to beat this on high. So that is what we are going to do. So I have to kind of get behind here. I've got um, so many things plugged in back here, but I'm going to plug in the mixer. And I always try to make sure if I'm plugging stuff in in the kitchen, you know, that I have dry hands because, um, you know, water and electricity, they, they do not uh, mix, as you uh, know from the science classes. Um, so I definitely always try to make sure that I do have dry hands when plugging any appliance in into the kitchen because of that reason. Okay, so I'm adding in a little bit of sugar to the mixture here. This is going, going to prove to be a very interesting cake and I'm probably going to have to uh, make it again at some point and uh, do some perfections. Um, unfortunately, I just did not have the time to practice this ahead of the call. Okay, so I the mixer I have here has two buttons on it. We'll switch in a button, and I'm going to flip the switch and flip it all the way to high. So you can hear the mixer going, and now I'm going to put it in this bowl and just kind of do like some circular motions. So I'm just going around in a circle here. Mixing, using a mixer I think is a little bit of an art and one of those things you have to practice with. I will say that I'm not necessarily an expert, but you use it enough times to kind of get the idea. Okay. So I'm just kind of, uh, you know, getting it all fluffy here. And, you know, I can tell, okay, that looks good. One of the mistakes I've made, so I've got two different sized mixing bowls here. I really should have done this in reverse and use the smaller mixing bowl for the flour and the bigger mixing bowl for the wet ingredients um, just because I have to add in the flour mixture and stuff afterwards but that's okay so next we're going to add in our mayonnaise and this is really going to be interesting because I've never actually tried measuring out mayonnaise before but uh, shouldn't so I'm going to use the same cup I used for the sugar, but I'm washing it out first, as you can undoubtedly hear. And we're going to make sure now it is dry. We do not want watery mayonnaise. So using a dish towel here, and now we're going to get the jar out of the fridge here. And mayonnaise, again, is a very identifiable jar. I've heard somebody mix up mayonnaise with something else before. Mayonnaise comes in a plastic jar with a plastic lid, especially the Hellman's brand. And they also, there's also smaller mayonnaise you can get in squeeze bottles, which may be a little bit more user friendly. Um, but it just depends, you do get a smaller amount of mayonnaise per bottle if you go that route. But again, mayonnaise is something that is very identifiable, very, um, easy to know what it is 
and then you just uh, when you you don't need to put it in your fridge until you open it but um, okay so we're kind of having to shake this out over the cup okay come on and if it still wants to not be completely cooperative then We'll go with plan number two, and that is find a spoon. And you're, you're pouring the mayonnaise out of the, trying to pour the mayonnaise out of the jar? Yes. And it's kind of working to a point. It might be easier if I'd have got used like a brand new jar of mayonnaise that had not been in the fridge. But that's okay, because what we're going to do is I'm now going to get a measuring spoon and scoop out more of the mayonnaise that way and pour it into the cup. I've got a, quite a bit already in. So we'll just scoop and pour. Scoop and pour. Okay, we're getting the uh, good amount here. The larger the measuring spoon, the easier this task is going to be. All right. And mayonnaise, of course, is very thick and um, yeah. Okay, so and I was cautioned, you know, with these types of recipes, don't overdo the mayonnaise. So we're going to definitely, you know, not do that. Okay. I'm going to put the mayo back up and we're going to now add it to our mixture. And then it says to beat this, the mayonnaise in on a low speed so let's make sure we use the right mixing bowl and we're going to pour okay this will come out of the cup a little bit easier than it did the uh, big old jar so we're going to put that measuring cup in the sink we're going to go back to our mixer and we're going to turn it on whoa whoa and oops the uh, bu other button on the mixer is just an ejector for the uh, beaters. So that's all my mixer has on it. Okay. So now we're just using our mixer motions again. And like I said, this time it's on low. And we're just um, stirring in. Uh, yeah, just kind of going in a circular motion. Do we have any raised hands? Uh, let's see. No, we don't. All right. I do have and a how question. Are we I raised mine. Oh. Oh, okay. So, Chanel yes, and Chanel's hand is now up. <laughs> yeah, sorry when you were asking. Um, just you said you were using a mixer without a beater at first. I'm confused. No. Um, but no, the mixer has a beater. It has two beaters. I said what you could. I said if you don't have a mixer. Oh, okay. Huh. You could maybe try using a beater um, if you do not have a mixer. But I don't know. What how do you mean by it. a beater? Um, a whisk. Oh, okay, okay, got it. You know those wire things that um, you just stir it by hand with one of those. Yeah. But I don't know. It's probably going to take longer, and I don't know how well that will work. But, um, you know, I know how to follow recipes. I'm not an expert chef. So, okay, Diane, I believe you had a question. Um, yes, I, I'm wondering um, how, what technique you use to tell if it's mixed. Are, are you uh, able to tell, like, through the beater or do you like stick your finger in it maybe a little bit to i see? stick my finger in it honestly i find that the easiest um some mixtures you can tell just by the way the mixer feels this one i can you know you cannot tell a difference at least i cannot tell a difference just by the feel of the mixer um but of course you know i definitely you, you make sure of course you wash your hands first before you oh absolutely <laughs> thank you um by by the way um your your time is at 10 35 eastern okay perfect perfect all right 
So now we're going to add in flour and a then it says to add in the water, then flour, then water. So this is going to be the interesting part of the recipe. So we're just going to, um, first thing we're going to do is actually go back. I didn't really stir in the mixture for the other stuff. So let's do that first of all. And like I said, this is going to be a very interesting cake and uh, you will know the results of it ultimately on the coffee clatch next hour because I will be on that. Coffee, of course, would go well with a cake like this or uh, um, whatnot. Okay, I think a wooden spoon is going to help me a little bit better in breaking up some of the, the, this stuff. And, I'm having problems lately, folks. I kid you not, my silverware is running away. So, um, you know, I referenced that Hey Diddle Diddle song earlier, you know, the dish running away with the spoon. The dishes are not running away, but my spoons are. And I'm hearing somebody's uh, voiceover in the uh, background. Or something. Okay. No. Interesting. Okay, I still can't find the spoon that I want, so unfortunately I have to clean off another spoon, a larger teaspoon. I'm hoping to find my wooden spoon, but um, that's okay. Um, can everybody please check their mute status? I am hearing yeah, some I'm, background noise. Yeah, and I'm noise. looking too. Okay. There's some music coming from. I'm, I'm, my thing was muted. Yep, okay. Um, well. Ah, there we go. All right. Uh, cute music, but uh, not appropriate for this call, but uh, perhaps uh, you could use that music for a, another call. Um, whoever was muted, unmuted there. Um, so let us go back to our recipe here. I'm going to dry off the spoon and um, go back to stirring. The bigger spoon definitely does help. I was hoping for my actual wooden spoon, like I said, but that's okay. Um, so now we're kind of, what's happening is some of the sugar is granulated here, which making it a bit of a more of a challenge than I would have uh, liked but we're slowly getting there okay so let us see what we've got here now just kind of going all in several different motions here trying to get everything stirred together I can use my spoon to kind of tell if there's any thick parts of the flour that maybe need a little bit more attention. So I'm just trying to do that. And now we're going to add in the flour to the mixture. So I'm just going to pour from the one bowl into the other a little bit and kind of pour some flour in mixture wise. And we're gonna turn on our mixer and start mixing. And you can definitely tell that now the batter is a little bit stiffer. Saying to do it on low, I'm doing it more on like medium because I can. Okay, yeah, it's definitely, it's, for those of you curious, it's definitely, I can tell with my finger, you know, it's looking cake batter-ish. So we're definitely going to have a cake. That is for sure. Okay. And Chanel's asking not a heaping mess. I don't know. We're going to find out. Um, all I know is what it looks like right now while it's in the bowl. It's the end result, though, that'll really be uh, telling. Okay, so now it calls for two-thirds cups water. And it says to add in flour and the water alternately, flour mixture and the water alternately. So I'm going to use my first third cup of water 
and add that in and we're going to run the mixer again. And now the water definitely makes it a little bit less stiff. All right, now we're going to add in some more flour here. Um, any day, come on. This stuff is a little bit uh, tricky. Okay, so the flower part no, no, number two, I'm just guesstimating. It doesn't give precise measurements. So I'm just using my best guess with my fingers. But we're now going to use the mixer again. For the flower mixture. So we have to, okay, yeah, this is now definitely getting stiff. Um, and I can tell just without even feeling it, just by through the mixer, it's definitely getting stiff. I'm going to have to switch hands here because I'm, this one is starting to get a little bit tired. Um, there are well, reasons why people do like these KitchenAid mixers because um, that just stand and mix for you because you definitely have a lot less arm work. But I think they are a little bit on the pricier side too, so that's the downside no i can't beat it i cannot beat this mixture um chanel's making comments to me in the background though so i don't know if those are coming through or not but um which is fine because since she's in the same room if she was to unmute it you heard what it was like earlier with the and um, hearing me through her phone and whatnot okay water number two here we go Okay, now my hands are messy here, so it's a little bit hard to tell. Whoa, there we go. But we are going to... Whoa, some of the water is spilling. Um, let's reintroduce some of it. Holding the water level, sometimes these smaller cups, when you're trying to hold something level like water that's very liquidy, can be a bit of a challenge. And... Okay, water is poured into the bowl. I don't, unfortunately, have any good techniques for that. But, um, okay, so that's getting poured, mixed in, and now our batter is lighter again. The advantage, though, of the smaller mixing bowl is I find sometimes having less space to work around is easier for me but that's just me. Okay, and now, and we're going to add in more the flour mixture. So it says to do this four times. So I'm just kind of guesstimating here if it's, you know, good enough or not. Ooh, but this is getting stiff, stiff, stiff. If you want a good workout, there's a reason why I don't do much baking. I do more cooking, because you do not, at least I don't use as much arm muscle with cooking. You can tell it's getting thick, thicker by the way the, mi the mixer is sounding. Yes, this is a really thick batter, guys. I mean, extremely Okay. Whew. I'm gonna need some more coffee after this. All right. So we're going to add in a little tiny bit more water and then the tiny bit of flour. And by the way, folks, if you do have any questions, feel free to still raise your hands. And um, podcast for those of you listening on the podcasters, I've not set this up yet, but I will set up an email address. Um, that I will announce on next week's show that you can use to contact me um, outside of the call for those of you listening by the archive. Uh, Chanel has her hand up. 
Chanel. Yes, I think it'd be a good idea if somehow in the beginning of the podcast, even if you go back and put it in later, you were to incorporate the instructions for the, because I know you go through them, but today it's been a little bit discombobulated, you know, so I think it could be helpful to people to have the instructions. I don't know what other people think, but, you know, at the very beginning, um, and then here you go through it, or at the end. Uh, Okay, no, I'll definitely include them at the beginning. Um, I was definitely going to include like the ingredients, but um, that's a good thought about the instructions too. So guys, when you hear this podcast, now you know where the idea for the instructions at the beginning that you will hear are uh, coming from. So now I wonder if I could have poured this into the main mixing bowl. Oh, well. So now we're stirring for the last time. And you can hear what this batter is like. I'm going to make this mixer a little bit higher just so I can... Whoa. And we're having a darn right mess here. This is not clean work. At least I've never found a way to do this type of stuff and not make a mess. I'm... No, I'm... I'm not a perfect cook, I just know how to cook, let's put it that way. If anybody, like I said, I should have used the bigger mixing bowl for this. Um, One thing, tip I will tell you is when you turn off the mixer, leave it in the batter until it's actually completely done turning. And that will help. Okay. Phew. Alrighty, I think we're done with that. So I'm going to add some of the excess batter back into the bowl. And now we're going to talk about our cake pan. So it definitely says to use a 9x9 nine nine cake pan. To my chagrin, I realized that I did not have a true two cake pans for this. So um, we're going to make do with what we have. And we're going to experiment. So I have a standard um, baking pan, and then I have a bunt cake pan. So I think we're just going to try the batter in both of those, and we'll see how this turns out. Now, does anybody know where I put my pans? No? Everybody's quiet today. Oh, well, you wouldn't know anyway. But, um... Okay, so let us, I know where my cake pan is at least, so we're going to do that. So it says to grease and flour the cake pan. But somebody on one of my previous calls mentioned the idea of using cocoa instead of flour. So we're going to try that. So I've got a cake pan here out. And I'm going to get my Pam cooking spray out. I just use the standard Pam. I don't know if olive oil Pam would, um, you know, there's different kinds of Pam, olive oil, vegetable oil, whatnot. Um, I don't know how much that matters, but I've just, I'm old fashioned, so I stick with the regular Pam. Okay, so this um, thing needs spraying, and that's what we're going to do. And now I'm going to take, um, by the way, um, Herbie, you're coming up on um, 10 minutes. Okay, good to know. Hour. So obviously, you know, you won't get to sample this cake on this call. You know, we'll have to uh, find out. Though the podcast, I will include any final thoughts at the end after this cake is made. So for those of you listening via the podcast, or if you're listening live and you go back and review the podcast, you will get some extra material both at the beginning and at the end, and I may even have some contact information as well that, again, will be included. So there, I've spread some cocoa around the baking pan, and now we're going to just, um, uh, the easiest way to do this, I think, is just going to pour, and I'm going to spread the batter around. 
And I, this can, pan is big enough that I think I can get the entire mixture into one thing. Um, yep. Kirby, if I might, is this supposed to be a layer cake or? No. What? Okay. I wondered why the two why the two cake pans then. Probably because of the amount of batter this thing has. I mean, it's a huge oh, okay. amount. So, I'm, but I think I'm just going to settle for one big fluffy cake instead of two smaller cakes. Um, if anybody thinks that's a bad idea, now is the time to say so. But this pan is like one of those deep bump cake pans that I'm using. And we still have no hands raised. Still have no so hands raised. Yes, you're okay. good to go. I guess so. All Ooh. right, so we are just uh, kind of, it's easiest for me to use my fingers. Again, I wash my hands before doing this for obvious reasons. But, um, and by the way, I can tell you scent-wise, at least, you do not smell the mayonnaise in the batter. Um, what we do have is, um, you know, definitely a strong scent of cocoa. So, all right, we're going to now get the ex excess batter off my hands here. And we're going to place this in the oven. If you have any final comments, um, now is definitely the time to raise your hand. No raised hand. No raised hand. So I'm going to, we're going to see how this turns out. If it does not, then what I'm going to do is invest in another cake pan so I can spread it into two um things let's see set timer for 35 minutes and see if it cooks better that way but we're trying it with one today so it is going to prove to be a very interesting cake and um it definitely smells good so you know i think people have described these mayonnaise cakes as a little bit on the moist side so we're looking for kind of like that um consistency a little bit so um definitely keep that in mind well guys this has definitely been fun it's been an adventure for uh, me at least and i hope that you all have been able to get some things out of it um you know if nothing else at least how to identify your mayonnaise and uh, some of your other baking products um we will be back in a couple weeks. I've not completely decided on what I am making just yet, but I will have that announced on the community call for when we do that. Again, thank you for uh, ACB for allowing me to host uh, this as both a call and now a podcast. Thank you, Diane, for your awesome uh, hosting work and and definitely, you know, it's the hosts that definitely help keep the calls going. Still and, got six minutes if you. Uh... Yep, we still got six minutes. If anybody has any things to, they'd like to talk about. If you have any other uh, recipes you want to share for a chocolate cake, we do have a quick bit of time for that. Um, if you have any requests for future uh, things you'd like to see me make, I can also, uh, you know, now's a good time to mention them. Uh, Armando? Armando. So you forgot to ask Kirby, or you forgot to tell us, what do you set your mm. cooking temperature at? 350. And it says about 30 minutes. That's assuming, of course, it's assuming, of course, you're using two cake pans. Okay. But um, 350 for 30 minutes. Okay. Just wanted to clarify for people who are following. Mm -hmm. I assume I assume that you um, preheated preheated mm -hmm. the oven. Okay. Yes, I did. Um, okay. I knew that well ahead of time, so it's just ready to go. Okay, uh, Chanel. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, for next time, I don't know what you could make, but I suggest something, not that this wasn't good and interesting, but you know, if I was trying to cook this, I would feel totally overwhelmed. So maybe trying to do something, you know, a simpler recipe, like alternating between something like this that involves lots of ingredients and lots of mixing to something that, you know, is more simple, kind of get the best of both worlds. Oh, definitely. Um, this is hard work. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, you 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 have a lot. You're showing a lot of courage, um, making something that you've never made before. Yep. So I've had you know over twenty years cooking experience, and like I said, I'm more of a cook than I am a baker. But you know, as I tried to demonstrate today, at least you know I do have the techniques. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I will mention that I have no vision. What I mean, I have light perception, but you know, I have no vision whatsoever. So I'm doing it completely blind. So no visual aids. I did not have any sighted assistance for this um, or anything like that. It will be what it is. And um, Sorry, no, I, I know I'm not supposed to be talking a lot as a host, but I, I, there's a lot of things about this that are making me curious. Can well, I go right ahead? Because nobody else seems to be talking. So, <laughs> okay. Um, I'm wondering about, I'm wondering if anyone is familiar, you know, I was, I'm trying to get an idea of how to measure uh, liquid precisely, um, such as, such as vanilla. And, um, I, I, I've always thought it would, would be neat if someone could invent a set of measuring spoons that stood up, you know, so that mm. you could pour something like vanilla into one and then, you know, dump it into your, but anyway, I've never seen anything like that. So I, I had seen uh, in an article about using uh, like a dropper, you know, a, a medicine uh, dropper. And mm -hmm. I wondered if anyone had experience with that and how they, liked it and what they had to do to get the medicine droppers. I guess you get them from your drugstore probably. Yep. Does anybody have any comments on this? Please raise your hand and um, we will acknowledge you. No hands. All right. So I myself have not used a measuring dropper. I've seen spoons that kind of stand up, but they're still not really flat on the bottom yeah yeah um but that i i don't see why that couldn't be invented and uh, hopefully we inspire somebody that has the metallurgy or plasticology or whatever who's listening to this podcast to go out and invent something like this see i'd or, like to myself but i don't know the first thing about inventing anything so me either. and we're at 1059 all right well we're doing fine um just real quick with vanilla i just kind of estimate myself i didn't so i didn't do a precise measurement and i guess just depends on how sweet you want things all right anything else from anybody uh, thank you guys nope. um i hope like i said i'm sorry if this was too complicated i hope you were able to at least get something out of it and i will see you all next time diane you may and the room. Okay. Great All show, right, Herbie. Thank you. I did a little bit of extra time from what it called for just to be on the safe side. Only by a couple minutes because I used that really deep pan. But Chanel is not going to try a bite. And she will let us know what she thinks. Hmm. Pretty good. Um... I'd say it's definitely more moist than that other cake. Um, you know, you don't, I think a little bit of like, you know, actual sweetness, some chocolate chips, not, not a whole lot, but you know, might be good or just something to kind of, but I'm not a huge fan of like dark chocolate. Right. Hmm. And it may have helped too if I'd have actually included the sugar as part of the liquid mixture instead of the Maybe, I don't know. But it might do good with some vanilla frosting. I never like chocolate and chocolate, but um, some vanilla frosting might go really good on it. I don't know though, but it's still pretty, it's pretty good. 
All right, so some vanilla frosting. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. And um, of course, the burning question that everybody wants to know, do you taste mayonnaise? No. I'm, it might be a little bit burnt, speaking of burning question. I'm not sure. Now, everybody keep in mind, I don't have a sense of smell. I've never had one, so my taste is not going to be... I can't take a taste nuances and different things, so... I am not the best taste tester, but it is pretty good. All right. Yeah, it did get a little bit burnt. Um, so I think this cake pan does a little bit better than what I realize. Mm. Mm. Not bad, actually. So a little less time, but it definitely turned out pretty good overall. Okay. All right. So this is actually a pretty good cake once said. Uh, it takes a lot of work, but it, this is a very good cake. Well, thank you for listening to this podcast, and we will see you next time.